welcome to Sunderton Church for a September Evensong. It's so lovely to have you with us. In a moment, Sarah Jane will lead us in the confession, but we'll start with a great hymn. It was written by John Bunyan. I think it's the only hymn he wrote. It's called He Who Would Valiant Be, and it's sung for us this evening by the choir of Southwark Cathedral. the beginning of our Evensong service, we put ourselves right with God. We confess our sins, lay them at the foot of the cross, and come away carrying only the forgiveness that comes through Christ at Calvary. Let's pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises, declare unto mankind, in Christ Jesus you are Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the responses which I think you know. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And now we'll listen to the words of the Magnificat. And while we do, we'll see some beautiful pictures of the Sussex countryside.
it's time for our readings. When Harold and I were planning this service, uh, he chose these readings and originally it was the intent that he would read them. But as many of you will know, he is in hospital. I spoke to him just a few minutes ago uh, and he's on a, a noisy ward and, uh, and I think he's struggling, poor chap. In many ways, he feels as though he's behind bars. So we send him our love uh, and in a moment we'll pray for him. But let's start uh, with the readings that he's chosen. The first is from Isaiah 61 and it is. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. And then the second reading is from the New Testament. It's from Luke, and it's an example of Jesus quoting from the Old Testament. That's something that he did many times because he was brought up as a Jewish boy and he was well versed, of course, in the ancient scriptures. So in Luke 4, it says Jesus stood and said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. And now I'm going to read you a poem. It's an adaptation of a poem called One Solitary Life. The words have been changed by Geoffrey Archer, and he's the first of two politicians that we'll hear about this evening uh, who have ended up behind bars. So this is a short poem. In many ways, the words I think are quite strange, but Harold loves them. And since reading them a few times, uh, I've grown to love them too. And certainly there's a powerful message at the end. So the son of God. He was born in a barn, his father a carpenter and his mother a decent woman, but they were of no significance. And certainly they couldn't have afforded to give the boy a private education. And yet, as a teenager, he was arguing the toss with his elders and betters in the council chambers. He never got a proper job. He just roamed the countryside, unshaven, and living off bread and water and the occasional fish, whilst offering his opinions to those who cared to listen. He became the manager of a football team known as the Disciples. Not one of them a star. In fact, the twelfth man rather let the side down by accepting a transfer fee of 30 pieces of silver to play for the opposition. The authorities eventually arrested him as a rabble-rouser, but couldn't decide what to charge him with other than the fact that he claimed that he was the Son of God. They strung him up with a couple of criminals, and when he finally gave up the ghost, they rather assumed that that would be the last they'd hear of him. The disciples were relegated at the end of the season. In fact, the captain denied on more than one occasion that he'd ever been a member of his team. When he died at the age of 33, there were no obituaries in the local press reporting his achievements, no glossy supplements highlighting his colourful career, no radio programmes to discuss his legacy, and no box sets recording any of his miracles. But then, he'd never really relied on focus groups to advise him on current trends, or advertising gurus to spend millions promoting his brand, or spin doctors to sharpen his image, and he didn't require social media to keep his followers up to date. So you could be forgiven for assuming that he'd be forgotten in a few days. So how can one explain that over 2000 years later, Jesus Christ is still the best known celebrity on earth? Could it just be that he was the son of God? Let's pray for Harold. Father God, will you please bless dear Harold 
in their hospital ward. We pray that he'll have some peace and quiet and healing, that the people around him will give him exceptional care and that he will soon be home. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The colic for today is, grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for aid against all perils. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we're going to have an anthem. It's by John Ireland. It's called Greater Love Hath No Man. John Ireland uh, was born in 1879 and he died in Washington in 1963 where he spent the last 10 years of his life. Um, he, was a, he was a great Christian, he wrote fantastic music, he was very, very keen on exploring the Downs and composing pieces of music which he thought reflected the Downs' beauty. And I find it quite hard to believe that he never 
stood in this church. I'm sure he must have come in at some time. So he wrote this amazing anthem, which you will hear has bits of scripture in it from all, all over the Bible. It has some, some words from the Song of Solomon. It has words from John's Gospel, words from Paul's letter to the Corinthians and his letter to the Romans. And because the words are quite complex, I've decided to show uh, a version which actually has, has the words on the screen so that you'll be able to follow the various references to the various scriptures. It's quite a long piece of music, um, but I hope you enjoy it. I think it's very special.
And now Sarah Jane will lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Father God, you created this place and we have treated it with so much disrespect. Lord, forgive us for the way that we have damaged this planet and we ask that you would help us to use resources wisely, be generous with what there is so that everyone has what they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, we ask for the leaders and influencers in this world that they would get their strength from you, that they would know their calling to lead justly and with honesty. Lord, we ask that you would be their strength and their guide. Lord, help your people, heal your leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we ask for your church around the world, in our country and in our communities. It has been a strange five months. Worship and gathering has been done differently. Some people are confused, isolated, and others are enjoying not having the responsibility of coming to church. Lord, we ask that you would speak to us by your spirit and help us to worship in spirit and in truth wherever our Sundays happen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for our communities. We ask that you would help us to be good neighbours, good Christians, and look after one another. Let us look out, not just for the widow and the orphan, but the one on their own, the one who doesn't get out much, the one who seems sad. Lord, as we pray for those in need, use us to answer our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those who are unwell or in need, in body, mind and spirit. Lord, bring them inner peace, physical and mental healing, and the support that they need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for ourselves. Help us, we ask, to look out for those who are imprisoned in various ways, those unable to leave their home, those who are separated from the world by trauma that holds them back, those with a physical or mental disability. Help us, Lord, to use our voices to speak out for those who cannot do so themselves. Let us be the advocates. Let us be your hands and feet for them, we pray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we're going to have a, a short talk by Jonathan Aitken. Uh, I'm sure many of you will know that he was a government minister who was convicted of perjury back in 1999 and sent to prison. Uh, after his release, he was ordained and he became a prison chaplain. And here he is just talking briefly about his work. You'll hear that he speaks well. And I know that John Williams has a plan uh, to invite Jonathan Aiken to come to our church one day. Uh, things obviously have been put on hold because of the corona epidemic, but maybe one day we'll have a chance to hear him. In the meantime, here is uh, something of a taster. Well, I've obviously had a pretty eventful journey um, going all the way from uh, cabinet minister, disgraced politician, jailed prisoner, and now prison chaplain. That's a trajectory which not many people, indeed, I don't think almost anybody has ever had. And I don't think I deserve any credit for this. I certainly didn't plan it. I haven't worked for it. I just put it all down to the amazing mercy and forgiveness of grace of God that somehow this has happened. Um, and uh, the question is what to do with it. And it answers a life of service. 
Well, I was ordained about 12 days ago by the Bishop of London at St Paul's Cathedral. It was a magnificent, splendid and sacred service. But of course the purpose of it is to go out and serve the Lord as an ordained minister. And I'm aiming to specialise in prison ministry because that's where my heart is and that's what I feel I'm called to do. But I will help out with my local church. I've already preached there once as a deacon and will go on doing so. And I will continue, as I've been doing really for some years, to do various kinds of prison ministry and also various kinds of outreach ministry, go all over the place just uh, preaching the gospel or giving a testimony talk, whatever it may be. But the whole concept, the whole plan is to serve the Lord. And if you ask me, why did I get ordained? I think I'd have to say, well, it's a bit of a mystery. There's an old Anglican hymn which goes, God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. And I'm certainly wondering and surprised why I'm suddenly the Reverend Jonathan Aitken. Uh, I've been called many things, but I'm delighted now to be that. Uh, but I felt called and the process was mysterious. I felt that really God was talking to me and saying, I want you in the prisons. Uh, and so after a certain amount of hesitation and saying very politely, please God, no, I, I then said, okay, God, yes. And I let my name go forward and I was accepted for ordination about a year ago. Well, prison is a surprisingly dog collar friendly environment. Um, prisoners actually like to talk to people who they know might be willing to listen to them to ease some of their fears, uh, not just in the chapel, that's part of it, but really on the wings. And if you're doing prison ministry, as I have been for some years, people often have very worrying problems, which can range to from threatened suicide and threatened self-harm to just terrible family worries. And they need to hear a loving Christian message, perhaps, but above all, I think they need um, what we call pastoral care. And I've enjoyed doing that for years. If you're uh, an ordained minister, well, you have greater access to various parts of the prison. The prisoners themselves welcome you. Um, I hadn't ex expected to be addressed as father, but that's what actually all prisoners do call chaplains. It's the sort of common lingua franca of prisons. They also very often call you Father Pi. And I was a bit baffled by this. Some of you seem to be calling me the pie or Father Pie, but this comes from prison rhyming slang. Uh, uh, pie and liquor equals vicar. And so that's why uh, it's in the sort of prison slang that the chaplain is the pie or Father Pie. Anyway, I've been enjoying it. And there are certain special things you can do um, if you are in that particular area of faith. For example, some prisoners want to make confessions and only an ordained priest uh, can give absolution. And that can be very, very important at giving closure to a life of crime or a life of sin. So there are all kinds of specialist areas within prison ministry. And I'm very pleased to be starting this new life, new career, at the somewhat advanced age of 75, what might be called the aftercare of prisoners. Now this is fairly neglected too. There's a gap has opened up between God's chaplaincies in prison and God's churches outside prison. The two don't often seem to communicate, let alone cooperate. So there's a great opportunity for like what might be called joined up prison and rehabilitation ministry. And I'm trying to start certain initiatives in that field. And now we're going to have our final hymn, which is uh, from Salisbury Cathedral, and it is The Day Thou Gavest, Lord, Has Ended. After that, Sarah Jane will give us a blessing, and after that, there will be some rousing organ music.
God go with you all this week. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep thy hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and with those who you love, remaining with you always. Amen.